My darkest moments being homeless was probably the nights where you feel like the most hopeless. The night I had nowhere to go, I was just walking up Tejon, walking downtown, and you could just hear people just talking behind your back, saying really rude, hurtful, judgmental things. When you're already hopeless enough, it hurts a lot. I've been homeless since I was 17. I would say that I was homeless in some way or another from the time that I was 15 to 18. I felt kind of shut out from my parents when I came out to them. Home is not the walls, it's not the ceiling. The people you want to be with, be around. I grew up in a family of Jehovah's Witnesses, so it was an extremely conservative and often kind of an isolated environment. And I was going door to door with my dad, and we knocked on a neighbor's door um, that they had a rainbow flag outside their house. And the woman that answered the door was uh, very clearly a lesbian. I could just barely kind of even get through what I had to say at the door. And by the time that I left, I was just in absolute tears because I knew that I was kind of at her door to preach about something that I didn't really believe in um, and that I actually found to be really oppressive uh, and also like really wanted to connect with another queer person. And when I was 15, I remember I was just laying on the floor in the dark room looking at the ceiling fan spinning around and I just said out loud to myself, I am gay. I didn't come out as trans at first. I don't think that I really had that language yet. But the first time that I kind of started trying to come out to my parents, I remember telling my mom that I was having dreams about liking girls and crying, you know, tears streaming down your face and things. And mostly worried, you know, what does this mean about me? Am I going to be in trouble? There was a huge barrier that just erected right upwards. It felt like I couldn't talk to them anymore from that point. I think that my parents at the time responded maybe in the only way that they knew how in that they talked to me about their views as Jehovah's Witnesses. They really treated this as some type of sickness. That experience really scared me. If a parent can move just from that sort of rejecting space to even just more like neutral, not even understanding, but just, you know, if a youth comes out and the parent says, I don't get it, I, you know, I'm not sure I understand everything, but I love you. Just that simple shift right there, that cuts the suicide rate for LGBT youth by 30%. lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender youth who are rejected from their families. That's a population in youth homelessness that's really overrepresented. Most all my friends have attempted suicide. I have not attempted suicide. But I've, like, yeah, I've thought about it. I would say that I was homeless in some way or another from the time that I was 15 to 18. The first night that I spent at Urban Peak was such a huge sense of relief. It really provided kind of the safe community and support that I needed at the time. When I moved into Urban Peak's apartment program, I mean, I was terrified to live by myself because I did, like never have actually lived by myself. I learned a lot living like on my own. The most important thing that we do for the youth at Urban Peak is to trust them, to see them, and to just let them know that they're okay the way that they are. And for a lot of them, nobody's ever done that. Homelessness is a barrier because of the emotional weight that it places on youth who are trying to navigate their lives as, as young people already, trying to find jobs, trying to stay in school. It really interrupts everything that you need to do in order to build a, sense, a successful foundation as a young person. The advice I'd give to people who are in the same boat I'm in is probably not to give up because it is easy to give up. I've seen friends get into drugs, meth, because they lost that hope. My hope is that the struggle isn't always about being queer or isn't always about being homeless, um, but that these youth are really empowered to say, okay, I've risen out of homelessness myself. How am I gonna now reach my hand back and also help other people?
out of homelessness. My home is Colorado Springs as a whole. There's so much work to be done here, and I want to do that work to see this city thrive as a community. If I were to get the title of Mr. Gay Pride Colorado Springs 2014, all smiles is what I would be for the next month. <laughs> and thank you for coming out to tonight's Mr. Miss and Ms. Gay Pride pageant here at Club Hill. I'm ready. If you've won this title, what will you bring to our young people to get them super excited about not just performing and have a lot of fun and goof around, but changing Carl Springs and Southern Colorado? We are the next generation. We need to be the ones that step up here in the next few years, in the next few decades, to make things happen. Your Mr. Gay Pride 2014, 2015 is Mr. Kevin Bennett. When we talk about queer young people or homeless young people, it's so easy to kind of just lump them all into the same category. When we can kind of get past the idea that we're allies just because we slap a rainbow sticker, I think we can all go a step a little bit further than that to really get to know what's important to LGBT youth or homeless youth in our communities. Nonprofits can do so much, but the overall culture and political culture in our community, as that starts changing, that's the thing that sends the deepest, loudest message to a young person. When they hear leaders can pick up a newspaper and read Cindy and Jane got married, so it's normalized. This is the United States and there's, you know, youth dying on the street every day. And we also think it's somebody else's problem. So I would like people to know that this isn't somebody else's problem. These youth are most often from our own communities. After having grown up in Colorado Springs for my entire life and never really liking it before, this is a really exciting time to be here because it seems for the first time in my life to have a really vibrant and inclusive and diverse local community. The most exciting thing is starting to look ahead at what the next 10 years will be like. And I don't feel like the biggest hurdle or obstacle that I'm facing is being queer or trans anymore. What I hope to accomplish and to figure out is where will I be most useful in this community and how can I help to improve it and to make it a more happy and a more vibrant place.